Today, let's talk about loops, how they actually make your sound worse and how they prevent you from being actually creative and what to do instead and how easy that actually is. Hey guys, welcome to the vlog. Today is finally again a full production day just here in the studio making music, no distractions at all. Yesterday I posted another video, track submits, where you guys sent me your tracks and I listen to them and give you feedback. And what I noticed going through a lot of tracks was a huge mistake that I also used to do concerning loops and samples that I just want to talk about today, clarify some things and prevent you from doing the same mistake because it sounds horrible. You will be asking yourself why is the sound so bad and not really be able to advance and it also sounds very amateurish so let's get right into it i've just opened logic with my auto load i have here one instance of guys it's like a drum step sequencer that is really handy and nice to use and it's already set up in a way that you have a four to the floor kick drum maybe this one and then what a lot of people do that use a lot of loops, they just drag a ton of loops into the project. So let's mimic that. And it basically just sounds really horrible. And that's the point. I hear way too many songs that just stack loops on top of loops, on top of loops, on top of loops. And then you just get this very mushy kind of sound, especially in the top end where all of the hi-hats are doubled and tripled because usually a hi-hat already plays eight notes or 16 notes, so it's quite fast. And if you add three or four hi-hats on top of each other, then you can't really hear them anymore and it sounds really weird. So I would highly, highly advise against using too many loops, using one loop or maybe two, of course, depending on how full these loops are, is okay, but if you stack three, four plus onto each other, it just sounds really bad. And I would also advise against having them at separate parts of the song, because then the drum section will sound like one certain type of sound in one section and another one completely different. And that's what you actually don't want to go for in a full song or in a full club track. Just for example, if I mute now two of those, we got a nice cool groove that we can work with. Same if you mute the other ones and just leave this one. More electro feel. Or the third one on its own. Very jacky, housey. Also works, but more than one of them together doesn't work. Some sample packs have like A, B, C, D loops that have different amounts of elements in them, which is really handy. Because if you want to arrange a full song and you just have this one loop and every time you just take the loop away, the entire track collapses, it's nice to have those alternatives to have them there and keep the sound consistent with the same drum set. If you're now wondering what's the better alternative to just using loops, especially if you just start out as a beginner, it might be too complicated to just create everything from scratch. I would highly advise you to just try out one-shot samples. For example here, this Pioneer, what is it called? This thing is just so much fun. You could also use the Geist Guru in your plugin or any other drum sampler sequencer. But this right here is a little bit more visual for the camera and I just got it brand new so I have to test it out. I got here now a standard house techno kit. We got here the kick, snare, clap, another kick, hi-hats, off hi-hat. The steps go from 1 to 16, one bar. If you want to make a 4 to the floor house bit, it's super simple, 1, 5, 9, 13. And you got your house kick running. Next we select the clap and put it on 5 and 13. Then the off hi hat. And you already got your first very, very simple drum groove loop that you can use in your productions. And the big advantage, you can change anything, anytime. 
you can change the hi-hat to put it on top of the kick and also be in between of the kick you can add percussions leave them out eq everything differently put reverbs differently on top because that's one of the huge disadvantages of loops it's all baked in if you add reverb then it's on everything that is in that loop and sounds really awkward and cheap this way you can have a different reverb for for the clap or snare no reverb at all on the kick which makes totally sense and making this as fun it's easy it goes really fast you can decide for any different kind of one shot sample which one you want to take if you don't like the kick or snare you can just exchange it without any problem and here for example you have like cool house sounds like one shot samples you could also add and actually build up an entire track just with a sampler but I, for the most part, use a sampler step sequencer just to make the drums. It's the easiest, fastest way. If you know how to play the drums, that might be an option, but for electronic music, that's actually the way to go. Every time I get to the mixing stage, whenever I mute the loops that I've used, the production just sounds so much better. So try that out for yourself. Go into your latest production, mute the loops and see if it's better or worse. Probably it will sound better, but maybe be a little bit too empty. So try to find one or two other elements to replace that loop and just make it sound a lot cleaner. Those loops, they they just don't fit your music because you didn't make them in mind with everything else. It's someone else that made it and you just use it. So be careful with it. I mean, there are some styles that definitely need samples and loops, especially like classic house music is made out of loops and a lot of hip-hop stuff but even there it's more like picking and selecting carefully small little parts pitching them up changing them eqing them and not like just stacking loops on top of each other kick underneath a synthesizer and you got your next big edm hit that's just not how you make good music and also don't forget all percussions they have a key there are instruments so if one loop is in one key and the other one is another one, it sounds really awkward, starts clashing. And even sometimes the guys that make those loops and sell them, they don't even know anything about music theory. So the percussions just within the one loop already clash. Also, I think I already talked about it. It's like the band principle. You have a drummer, you have a guitar player, a bass player, a singer for the vocals, and maybe someone that is playing the chords on a guitar or on a piano. And that's kind of what we humans are used to. If you put more into a song, for example, stacking up those loops would be like having five drummers instead of one drummer. No one would ever do that. That's just way too much. So drums are just there to give you the groove, a little bit of speed, like the, the movement and, and build up the tension and the rest is actually down to the songwriting that happens around the drums. So I personally only use one shot samples. If you're interested to get really cool one shot samples, I will let you know where and how. And there is also a new edition coming, but first I actually need to dive deep into this logic project that I just opened that is totally blank, just starting out from scratch and another new song. All done with work. Now, just another quick example. We got here again the same loop, kick, clap, off hi-hat. Oh, wait, the off hi-hat is gone. So now a standard Jackie Groovy thing that we could use for Tech House. And just for example, by delaying those two hi-hats to here, you got an entirely different groove that just feels different and might fit better to other kinds of music. Or something like this, more a groove. Or you just play something in. Same for the clap. So there are endless possibilities and if you use loops you just take away all of those possibilities, the possibilities to create, arrange the different type of one shots and also the possibility to mix it and arrange it. So just place, try it out, just make those grooves and drums yourself. It's extremely easy, it's extremely fun, that's all what music is about. I don't know what I now did. Just 
random and you can still tweak it and make it fit to your song. I think it's extremely simple and I don't really get why people even bother using loops. I mean, I did myself at the beginning as a beginner. That's what you just go for because there's no real other option because you don't know all about this stuff, but it's so easy, so straightforward. Just go with it. That thing is, is really a whole lot of fun. I still need to figure out how it actually works and do a full review for you guys. Maybe even in two parts because it's actually that complex. I also want to take it out to the club, test it there, probably at the beginning of next month. But first I need to concentrate on the dance fair, which is coming up this Saturday. I might also be there on Sunday. I'm still not sure about Sunday. Saturday, definitely giving there my masterclass. If you want to come by, check it out. Just go there. I think there are still tickets available. I'm actually not really sure. Also bring with you your phones for selfies, a pen and paper. Vanessa is also there. I already told her to train how to pose for selfies and, and train her signature just for you guys. It's definitely going to be a whole lot of fun. So can't wait for Saturday for me now back to playing around with this guy a little and then tomorrow back here again to the studio. So don't miss to tune in tomorrow. And before I completely forget it, there is a new sample pack available. If you're looking for good one-shot samples, down below the first link in the description, it's the sample pack by the Noise Geeks. The guys that just last week released their song on my label, which now has over 60,000 plays. So a huge, huge success for them. Also for me, for the label. It even entered the viral charts. So if you're looking for some good one shot samples by people that actually make good music, it's all in the description down below. You can also get all of the older sample packs by other artists, also by me for free. Just with that link. Let's maybe just do one more random house loop to show you how easy it actually is. So without listening to it, hit play, record is on. Uh, let's do the kick, clap, maybe two more. The big one, some of this, I don't know what it actually is. Maybe here and there and that and... So even random is better than some of the loops that you actually pay for. So don't buy loops. One shots is enough and then do it yourself. Way more freedom, way more fun. That's it. Sign out.